Hey guys, welcome to Cinder Bounce. It is just me today because seeing all this incredible football being played out, it's now Sunday, the 24th of September, a glorious sunny day here in Victoria. The birds are chirping, grand finals coming up, and once again, it's another year where my boys, the Essendon Bombers, are not in it. So I just felt like having seen all this incredible gameplay and seeing this great footage getting around and watching DR's live stream on your DR. Congratulations, mate. Hope your lines can go all the way. Looking at the Blue Abroad channel and all the Carlton enthusiasm of those two teams going right at it. People like Swoop Luke for Collingwood. Congratulations to him and his boys making it through to the grand final and things like that. Obviously, I was Team Orange this week. I did want the Orange team to get up, but alas, it didn't, they didn't go their way. But it sort of had me thinking, geez, it would have been great if I could feel that way about my boys. And I really hope that that day can come really soon. But when I sat and thought about that today, it's like, geez, this team has gone through a lot. The Essendon Football Club has gone through a lot over both a short period of time and a long period of time at the same time. It's been really difficult as a fan in the modern era to keep fronting up all the time with the consistent optimism and hope that things are going to get better with the constant asking for patience from the Essendon Football Club. But I'm willing to give it to this one because this administration and this Essendon Football Club is different to all the different variants that we've had in this modern era of me following this team. And I just thought that it's really important for us fans to recognise that the club does understand that it needs to change. And I think it's done everything it possibly can to bring those changes into fruition. So I'm going to go through all of the off-field changes that we've had in recent times. In the span of a year, this is going back to August of last year. We're now in September. In this year that has gone by, from the end of last season to the end of this season, there has been a lot of change. I've spoken about it with Big J, who loves to continuously remind me about the Essendon Football Club and our demise and our lack of performance. But I keep telling him we're on the right track and we're doing everything we can to get to where we want to get to. Starting with this decision. This decision was massive. August of 2021, Ben Rutten was sacked. It had to happen. We had too many, too many games where we simply were not competitive. I never was for this appointment in the first place, for those of you who know me. I never thought it was going to be a wise selection selecting him. Nothing against Ben Rutten. Nothing against Truck personally. I am sure that he is a wonderful line coach. And that's what he was at Richmond before coming to Essendon. He is a line coach. I did not see or think that he was ready to take on the senior job. There were, play, there were people at the club who backed him in, who weren't willing to move him on, were not willing to talk to Alastair Clarkson. And that simply could not happen. Not making that call to speak to Alastair Clarkson was wrong. It was plainly wrong. And those who backed him went out very soon after. We needed a change of the guard. We needed a new CEO. We needed, four, we needed new directors the directors that stuck by and wanted Truck Rudden. The team needs to be unified. We've now got Dave Barham as the CEO. Andrew Welsh, who is a very successful businessman and ex-player of the, of the, for the club, was appointed as a director in September 22. There were also other directors. Tim Roberts was brought on. David Wills was brought on. And our first ever Indigenous board member, and of course, the great Dean Rioli, also was brought on in, as part of the club reset. We've had, we have a great history of so many Indigenous players coming through our doors 
it was only right and about time, frankly, for this to happen. But there was also an external review that was conducted. And it was pretty scathing. Now, we all knew that things on field were not working. We were continuously mediocre. Doesn't matter who the coach was. Didn't matter who the players were. Things kept changing in the playing list, but nothing was working. An external review was conducted, and it was pretty scathing. Highlighted here, and I've got it highlighted here because I think this played a massive role in the drop-off to our second half of the season. We lacked unity off the field, and the players weren't fit enough on it. That, I think, was is huge. And the lack of fitness came to bite us in the butt this year. We're playing a much more competitive game style, one where we would run to the final siren, be competitive against the best teams. Yes, we didn't beat the best teams all the time, but we came damn close. And that, I think, took a massive toll on the players. They hadn't had to work so hard for so long in a season. And that external review showed it. Craig Vozzo was brought across from the West Coast Eagles as our new CEO. It came fairly quickly, and he has been quite spoken, uh, softly spoken. He hasn't really come out and said a lot to us as members of the football club. And for that, I thank him. I'm seeing a lot of his work is being done off the field, behind the scenes. And that's the sort of thing that we want. We want good people to do good work at this football club. And from what I can tell, it seems that he's doing a sensational job because there are changes happening, lots of them. We've already gone few, through a few. That was before him. But as you can see, there's a lot of tabs open, a lot of tabs. Heppel stepped down as captain. An end of an era under Heppel's leadership. And take his place was Zach Merritt, who everyone knew was the man. We didn't have a leadership group. We didn't have all these fancy titles, co-captains and things like that. No. We went old school. Merritt captain, Andy McGrath vice captain. Simple, sweet, direct. We don't want people to say, oh, I'm not in a leadership group, therefore I don't have to show leadership. No. Everyone on the field has to show leadership. Go to a traditional style Zach Merritt was the clear option, the clear option, one who would set standards and would confront players and tell them and let them know when they didn't meet those standards. Heppel, sensational club servant, great clubman, so happy that he managed to stay on and continue playing. The back half of his season this year was sensational. We're always quick as assistant supporters to bash Hep whenever he does something wrong. And admittedly, at the start of the year, it happened quite a bit. But to his credit, he found another gear and was among our best. And I expect him to poll really highly in our BNF this year. So massive thanks to Hips. He's been sensational. And congratulations to Zach. Zach has been a terrific leader. He, he's you know, received a lot of praise from various people in the media this year. And us Bomber Faithful can't wait to see what happens in the next year. Peter Wright extended a four-year deal on the eve of the season. It was so exciting. We couldn't wait. Our previous BNF from last year, our number one goal kicker. And it looked like a mistake of some sort. Because in the morning, this news came out at 7.48. And yet on the same day, in the afternoon at 1.30, we get news of an injury update and he's ruled out. He doesn't come back until the Carlton game in round 13. Our BNF, our number one goal kicker, gone at the dawn of the season. And we're thinking, what is going on? How can this be? Dale Tapping in June steps away from the club because earlier on in the year as well, at the start, he was diagnosed with myeloma form of cancer in the blood. It was shocking news. And he steps away in June. And it happens to coincide 
with about the same time where Peter Wright, where Peter Wright came in in June, barely four days later, we play against Carlton and we win. But he was our forward coach. Dale Tapping was our forward coach. And things changed. We needed, we needed Tapping to be around at this time. It was a forward line that had changed. For the whole front half of the year, we didn't have Peter Wright and had to play industrious football. We had to play unpredictable football. We were mobile. We were small. But it was working. Peter Wright came in, and of course, the problem and the fear that we all had was that it was going to be too Peter Wright focused in the forward line. And our scoring did fall away as a result. Redmond recommitted for the further five years, despite strong interest from Adelaide, who were really coming after him hard, offering him a lot of money. Oh, Adelaide supporters all over the place were so sure he was coming, but he recommits for five years. Terrific news. We all were incredibly happy at the football club. Same thing when Das turns his back on free agent and also extends for the further, for the further five years. So good. So, so good to retain our best players. Now, whether or not you watching this as a non-Essendon fan, consider them to be genuinely good players or not. To us, they are among our best and leaders on the field. And we absolutely need these guys fit and firing and playing for us in order for us to make it to the next stage of where we want to get to. More off-field changes came. Essendon VFL coach Lee Tudor, he's been at the club for quite some time. He was also moved on. Marnie, Josh Marnie, our football boss, also moving on. It's also very interesting that this man's face is in there because, as we all know, he also will be moving on. So much change off the field in our club. New CEO, new president, new coach, new captain, new gym of football, new recruitment. Everything is new. We continue to hold on to players. Brian, exciting young Ruckman. Can't wait to see his future. Harry Jones continues to sign on. He, if he can get his body right, will be very exciting for us in our forward line. Yes, of course, the news came out. BZT wants to go back home. And that's fair enough. He wants to go back home. That's fine. It was a question of when, not if. We did respect him and did offer him a three-year deal, but the pull home factor is too strong. It is what it is. He's the only one, though, to request a move because Menzi signed on. Really important for us, small forward. Hard-nosed player. Love what we got from him. Boulders, Kane Baldwin, he's going to be huge for us as well. I've loved what I saw from him this year. We need to get more games into him. And the big one, Matt Roses, coming in, who will be our new spearhead of talent and operation. Because, of course, the guy in the picture who we saw just before, Dodoro is gone. One of the biggest changes in AFL history has been there for so long. 30 years he's been at the football club, basically a part of the furniture, lifelong member of the football club. It is truly an end of an, end of an era, and things are going to change drastically for us. He'll be with us for this trade period, for this draft, but it will be this guy moving forward. And we welcome Matt to the club, and we wish him all the best. We also got this guy. He's also nominated us. Ben Mackay has nominated us as his new home. Is he worth that much money? A lot of people will say no. For that long, a lot of people will also say no. But for us, we simply had to do it. We were in 
no position to say no. We had to give him what he wanted. We were losing BZT. We needed the key defender. And he is an upgrade on the key defender that we had before. No disrespect to BZT. I loved him. And if you know me, I've been singing his praises all season long. But it is what it is. Ben Mackay is ready to go now. He's bigger. He's stronger. And he can match up on opposition players, opposition teams, number one key forward. This should hopefully free up Jordan Ridley and Mason Redmond to do more of what they want to do. I'm really excited to see what Ben can bring to the club. We're hoping that this improvement into our back line will see us be able to play with a bit more flair and a bit more offensive potency while also limiting the amount of scores that we give up. As you can see, there's been so much change to happen at this football club in such a short period of time. They say one week is a long time in football. Imagine how long one year is. All these tabs... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four tabs. Twenty-four tabs worth of changes in this one season that has come and gone. It's very hard to see a team rocket up the ladder and achieve success with so much change. Even some as recent as this week that has gone by. It's impossible for the club to have gone through such a massive, rapid improvement, see us playing finals and contend. But this has been an almighty shift, an almighty effort by this proud historical football club to get us back to where we're meant to be and where we want to be and where we haven't been in so long. Of course, on the field, we ended up finishing 11th on the ladder. It's hard to be super optimistic and super buoyant about our optimist, uh, you know, our chances of success, having finished 11th, having really just collapsed in the back half of the season. And you look at that percentage, it's horrendous. It is bottom four. It is the fourth worst percentage in the league, only ahead of Hawthorne North and West Coast. Obviously, we had a lot of percentage get taken off in that GWS game, <laughs> not going to dwell on that too much. But I'm telling you that it seemed clear that the back half of this season was very different to the front, to the, to the front half. When we go through how we play, we started the season quite well. We smashed the Hawks in what was a great game. We were challenged by the Suns, who people expected to take another step forward under Stewie Dew. We were challenged, but in the last quarter, we proved too much. Against the Saners, who started the year red hot, to only go down by 18 points, I thought was a valiant effort. We overcame a lot of inaccuracy in that game against the Giants, but we got the job done. This was probably one of the biggest upsets I've seen for us in recent times. And gather round in Adelaide, in the wet, we took down the Melbourne Demons. Very impressive. We were in front at three-quarter time and really should have beat Collingwood. Alas, this juggernaut came back and just completely devoured us. We were pretty competitive against Geelong. They came flying out of the, out, out of the gates, put on this lead, and it looked really scary at first, but to our credit, we continued to fight on for a respectable five-goal loss. Poor Adelaide, in Adelaide, down by five, very close. This was a game where we just simply were decimated with injury and had no one. We lost at a field, we lost Parrish, we lost half, we didn't have Shield, we lost half our midfield. Traveling up to Brisbane was always going to be a difficult ask. A fairy tale dream time game. Incredible. I lost my marbles that game <laughs> and my voice. It was a very professional 50-point win against the West Coast Eagles, who had lost by over 100 points to the Hawks the week before. There was no winning for us. Regardless of how we played this game, there were always going to be critics, but a 50-point margin was very healthy. Just got over the line against North Melbourne by six, and this was a great game. One we, we thought where Carlton's season had finished, 
But to their credit, what an incredible turnaround they've had. Commiserations to the fans for dreaming, for wishing, thinking that they were going to be in the grand final, especially after that first quarter against the Lions. But you got to hold your heads high. I hope our team can get to that point. The second half of the season was a lot worse after this bye. It was a very disappointing showing against Fremantle over there. A tragic, heartbreaking loss. This was actually a really great game that we played. We really deserve to win that. But Dan Houston, what a star. We really took him we really took this game apart in one burst against Adelaide. It was a lot closer apart from that one stretch where we had the dominance and put it on the scoreboard. It was pretty close. Got smashed by the cats. Got smashed by the Bulldogs. This was a disappointing end because we were, we were getting smashed by the Swans, but came back with a wet cell in the last quarter, left too much for too late. Really should have lost this game. The Eagles kicked more goals than we did. This game was also really close. North Melbourne seemed to have really gotten really good very quickly against us. That game happened, and that game happened. They went away on holiday before I did. <laughs> They packed their bags. They knew I was going overseas and decided to pack their bags and went with me to the States for these last two games. Tragic, but thankfully they left it to a point in time where I wasn't watching. <laughs> and you can see that overall, when it comes to team average ratings, we are bang on average. We are a bang on average team. With talent. We do have talent. But we don't have the guts, the stamina, and the strength to maintain a competitive game plan at this point. But we will. Bottom three for contested possessions. Second worst percentage rating for our contested possessions. In terms of ground ball gets, we are second last in ground ball gets. Stoppage clearances, we are dead last for stoppage clearances. And in total clearances, again, we are dead last. When it comes to our scoring, our goals per inside 50, we are bang average, 23 and 23. When it comes to our defense, our loss percentage in defense, we're pretty close to average. 24.8, 27.2, 2.4% 2. worse. And in terms of defensive one-on-ones, we are bang average. So as you can see, in a lot of aspects of this game, offensively and defensively, we're pretty close to average. An average, mediocre side, where we are just in the middle of the pack, not challenging, and not at the bottom. This is a position that we as an Essen fan base know all too well about. And again, the contested possessions and <laughs> stoppage clearances continue, continue to pester us. But I believe in the direction that this club is going under Brad Scott. You can tell he's not happy with what he saw on the field. He was consistently pissed off as we all were in the back half of the year. I think what we are is we are closer to the front half next year. I think we're going to be offering a lot more performances like we saw in the front half of the season. Competitive, working our butts off, tackling, pressure acts, things like that which cause front half turnovers. I expect that we're going to be a stronger outfit next year. We are extending and holding on to our talent on the list, whilst also looking to add more. We're going to get Mackay as a direct upgrade to BZT. And we hope that by retaining Redmond, by retaining Parrish, our midfield group can stay stable. Our midfield group can look at what the Giants did, how many midfielders go through there and contribute. Well, I really, I really genuinely believe that we are on the right track 
And part of what makes a football team so great is having great people. It's good people that make good football clubs. Don't have to look past Geelong. They are one of the best run organizations in, in the country. It's not just because of the players. It's because of the people behind the players that put them out there and make sure they get, they get the best out of them. I think we are doing that. I think we're getting the best in terms of CEO, president, coach, recruitment, board members, and fans. I'm not one to toot our own horn. I'm definitely not tooting my own horn. But I genuinely believe, and I told my brother this watching watching the Brisbane Carlton game, how many Carlton fans were at the Gabba. I'll tell my brother, you watch. When Essendon are good again, when Essendon are challenging, you will see red and black everywhere. We stuck by this club when it was at its knees. Not many clubs can say that they were around to witness such a catastrophic event like we witnessed in the 2012-2013 era. We've been through a lot of bad in recent times. As long as we continue to stick fat, continue to demand excellence, demand improvements, and keep fronting up every week, we're in the top four for attendances at games and half our games are at Marvel Stadium. Half our home games are at Marvel and we're up there. We broke our record for memberships for a team that finished 11th. We can do it. I believe that one day we will see the Bombers fly up and up and up to win the Premiership flag. Thank you so much for watching. It's been your boy, Joe. Let me know in the comments down below what you think of this little wrap-up. It is a bit longer than usual. It is a bit different. And I am speaking a bit more emotionally here. I just want to see my club be good again. And I think we will see it soon. See you guys in the next one.